What's going on Workforce? Brian here. And today we're talking about all three tanks. That's Paladin, Dark Knight, and Warrior. So what's changing with them? And what's changing with tanking? Let's discuss. So this week we've obviously been covering all the job changes from casters, healers, etc. And there's a lot of jobs, 15 in total, that we need to talk about. And so in order to really kind of... <laughs> so what we're doing here is we're taking the Paladin, the Warrior, and the Dark Knight, and we're just going to combine them into one video because there's changes that affect all three, and then there's obvious changes that we've seen with the skill videos. We don't know what all the skills are, so let's talk about the core principal changes that are coming to tanks with 4.0. First and foremost, the DPS stat switching back to Strength. It was Strength until 3.2, where it switched to Vitality, and at the time made a lot of sense. Tanks were heavily statting Strength, and thus their HP pools were really low, and as a healer, it became very stressful. But obviously, that change ended up having a huge impact, and namely that impact fell on Paladin, who's fallen out of favor pretty much after that point. So this change actually has big implications. That is that tanks are going to only be able to equip tank-based accessories, which is going to be primarily vitality statted. So there's going to have to be Matera that's going to come and play if you really want to get that extra strength stat boost to help out your DPS. But that change affects everybody. That means that tanks are going to equip tank accessories, healers are going to have healing accessories, and everybody else is going to have accessories that fall into line with that change. So obviously right now and prior, you could equip any accessory that you wished, even if it didn't necessarily help you out. Now it seems like that's being restricted. And I don't know if that means we're going to get other options to pick from. I guess we're going to have to wait and see from an accessory perspective or if there's just the right path of the accessories themselves. And then what happens with the ring accessory? which usually could only be unique, and thus usually you would always kind of stack something else. Like you would pick something that was strength-based, you'd pick something that was int-based or something like that because you really couldn't take something of the same eye level because again, of that unique quality. Is that gonna go away? There's still a lot of questions we don't know, especially when it comes to the gear, and this is because of that. So stats aside, let's talk about share world abilities that all tanks are gonna be able to pull from. So again, thanks to Reddit, and I'll put the link in the description below if you guys want to go read through this list. You have Rampart, Low Blow, which is a stun. It's a five second duration, 25 second cooldown. Provoke, Convalence, which is increase your healing received. Those are all skills that we currently have in the game. The new skill called Anticipation. Reprisal, which was a Dark Knight skill, but now essentially reduces the outgoing damage from the target by 10%. Awareness, which essentially helps modify uh, critical hits. Now, we don't know if anything's changing on that yet. Interject, where you silence a target. Previously a paladin skill, but it's good to see that as an option, especially if there's content that needs it. Here's a real fun one that I'm excited about. Ultimatum, which is an AOE provoke of a kind of a five yom uh, radius. Not too huge, but at least pretty cool. And then finally, a new ability called Shirk. We really don't know much about that right now. What we don't see in this shared role is a gap closer. So we do know Dark has a gap closer. Now Warrior has a gap closer, that shoulder charge that he has, but we don't see anything yet for Paladin that has that. So the question is, is will Paladin be the only one that doesn't have that kind of, that run up to the, the target really quick or jump to the target really quick ability? And it's okay if they don't, they all, all tanks don't need to be the exact same, but I was wondering, if that gap closer was going to make its way into the roles as opposed to individually, but it appears that it didn't. So from the video and various tooltips that have been shown, we know that Paladin is going to have a couple abilities. Total Eclipse, Holy Spirit, Requisite, Passage of Arms. Those are some of the new abilities that they have. Now, these numbers are going to change. I'm going to let you go read the detail on them if you wish. But a real big and actually probably needed change is that Shield Oath is going from level 40 to level 30 from Acquisition, and Sword Oath is going to level 35. This should hopefully help out newer tanks. Tanks at that level, especially as a Paladin, it felt always like there was this challenge at the early phase of the game to be able to hold hate because you really didn't have a lot of hate building abilities and Flash doesn't really ever do any damage. 
it just kind of did a blind. So we don't know what's changing with any of that, if that's gonna help at all. I think this is a good move and one that shows that the developers have been listening. Now, for me, the biggest change for Warrior is obviously that gap closer, but we've seen in the video and he showed it off that with the beast gauge as it fills up, you're able to execute uh, abilities after one after another if your beast meter fills up enough. So it shows Yoshi P using fail cleave over and over and over again because he had enough points. Previously you were only able to use this once and then it would have to build up your stacks of abandon to be able to execute it again. So I think this is a really cool thing. The question of whether it's overpowered or not will have yet to be seen, but all in all, I think it looks really cool. And then finally with Dark Knight, they didn't show off too much. You see some of the Dark Knight's abilities in the video uh, as it goes through. We've already seen one of his new abilities where he kind of puts this, the shield up over the samurai, which was really cool and exciting to see. But all in all, it looks like Dark Knight has their blood gauge. It's filling up as they attack. So what we can take from this is that there's probably not a lot of changes coming to Dark Knight. They're just gonna get some new abilities and some adjustments because in my opinion, Dark Knight has been just a lot of fun to play. And with the gap closer, that was one of the things that kind of sold me on it. So I don't know now, I don't know what's gonna be my favorite tank. Is it gonna be Paladin? Is it gonna be Dark Knight? Is it gonna be Warrior? I do love what they showed off with Paladin and a shield blocking ability called Passage of Arms. And from Reddit, we can take this information. So it creates a barrier behind you, increases your block rate to 100, and then anybody who's standing kind of in a cone behind you and that behind the wings is going to take 15% less damage. That is awesome. That just means, especially from raids and various content, that as a paladin, you are really being the shield and sword for your party and being able to reduce that damage. Is this change going to bring paladins back into prominence? I'd venture to guess probably not. I think the change that's going to bring them back to Providence is that the DPS value being strength based, having those calculations shift back. And so, so you're going to see Paladins become that damage mitigation machine that they were designed to be. Also, the fact that the, your shield can now block magic damage is huge. Paladins really were weak against magic damage and thus Dark Knight kind of had that extra ability because they had those abilities to reduce magic damage. And those magic dam damage tank busters were rough. We don't know if this is going to not just fix and help balance out the three tanks. I, I feel like it is. I feel like, you know, having three tanks to really kind of focus in on the strengths of each will be a good bet. And it should be interesting to see how that is going forward. The question is, is it going to keep people tanking? Is it going to encourage more people to tank? And we won't know that until uh, at least a couple months into Stormblood and beyond. So anyway, I know I'm going to be tanking and... Ideally, you know, gonna enjoy all three tanks for the strengths that they offer. So, but I'd love to know what you think. What tank are you most excited about from the abilities that they've shown versus also the stuff that we don't know? Are you currently maining one and thinking of switching to another? Let's have that conversation in the comments below. But anyway, for work to game, my name is Brian. Thank you so much for watching this video. And thanks to all our subscribers. Yesterday we crossed over 5,000 subscribers and that in my mind is just an imaginary number, one that I, I still can't believe it. Thank you so much to all of you, every one of you for watching our videos and hitting that subscribe button. <laughs> it means so much, it's crazy. <laughs> still can't believe it. Anyway, I hope you have a fantastic week and I hope to see you in my next video. But until then, take care. Hey, it's me. Thanks so much for watching this video. You should click over here to see more videos just like it, or you should click down here to check out our recent vlog. But you can also click somewhere down here below to hit the subscribe button, as well as check out our other info. Again, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.